So today, like, um, what God put on my heart and share is um, God, like, what's God's will for you? Because I remember for the longest time I used to ask God, what is the will for me? Like, what am I supposed to, what am I supposed to do with my life? Like, what, what is your will for my life? Because I used, because you hear a lot of times people will tell you you have to ask God what's, your will for your life is, and they'll tell you that you, they'll tell you that God has good plans for you. Even the Bible says that, that God has plans, good plans for us. But then you ask yourself, what is it? Like, what is God will for me? So today, I um, I figured we would just talk about like what's God's will for you. For those like who don't know like exactly what God wants you to do with your life, and we are gonna be looking at uh, First Thessalonians four three. like how do you how do you become holy you know or how do you know that you are holy and uh, so you become holy by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior that's like the most important thing that's the foundation of everything in your life it's just giving your life giving your life to God and in Ephesians 1 4 it talks about Ephesians 1 4 if anybody's there you can So in Ephesians 1, 4, it says, Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him, and it gave him great pleasure. So praise God for his great for his gracious grace. He has poured out we praise God. So praise God for the gracious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. Uh, he is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave us our sins. Amen. Amen. So that's God uh, God God's plan for you even before you were born. Even before he created the heavens and the earth and every beautiful thing that you see out there, he he already had a plan for you and that plan was to be holy and without fault in his sight. Mm. Can you imagine that you stand before God and you are pure than the light itself over there? Mm. That's what God's plan is for us. And so when we accept Jesus Christ, we accept that he died for us through the through the cross, we get, we become 
holy through the blood of Jesus Christ because when he died and he shed his blood on the cross he, he sanctifies us amen? amen so the first how how you can really be holy and know that you are holy is by accepting Christ because when you accept Christ it's like you open door to eternity amen, amen. and um, there is also <coughs> And, and the, it, oh, God also always has this like in His mind, and he, like He knows exactly what He wants for us. And so we also want to read um, Colossians one nineteen to twenty two. It also talks about like what God did exactly to make us holy. Amen. Like um, what it took Him to make us holy, and why and why being holy to God. It, for us, being holy is very important to God. And so in 19 it says, For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ, to live in Christ and through him God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once, who were once far away from God. You are his enemies separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence, and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. Amen? Amen. So that's, that's, that's the beauty of accepting Christ as your Savior, because sin separates us from him. But when we are in Christ, we are glorified with Christ. We are reside, we, we become like we become a new creation in Him, and we gain that sanctification and that holiness, and we have the right to stand before Him without fault. Because now God does not look at us from our, our like He doesn't see us as we are, but instead He sees us through the blood of Jesus, Amen, and that sanctifies us. So. And that is how like we how that is how we get holiness. And so we also want to look at how like what's the importance of being holy? Why is it a big deal? Like why did God want me to be holy before even created me, before even created the heavens? So um, holiness gives us access to the presence of God. Amen? Amen. So in the Old Testament in the Old Testament holiness was a big thing. It was really was really key to the Israelites and that was very it was very important that they are holy and so what they used to do for the priests they would consecrate themselves before they enter the Holy of Holies and that was the presence of God that's where the presence of God resided so they had to consecrate themselves for them to be able to be in the presence of God and, and they would go in with blood to um, as an atonement for the sins of the people. But before they even approach the Holy of Holies, the Holy Tabernacle, they would have to set themselves apart. They would have to make sure they are pure because if you are not, if they were not, they would die in the presence of God. Okay? Right, right. So that's why it's very important that we are holy and that and that um, holiness like gives us the access to be in the presence of God. Because his word said that so that we can stand before him without a single fault. Amen? Amen. So holiness gives us um, the ability to stand in the presence of God. And um, so we're going to read Psalms 15, 1, 5. And David is talking about like who can stand in the presence of God. Like who are those that, that can stand on his holy mountain? Um, Psalms 15, 1 to 5. So it says, uh, Who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord? Who may enter your presence on your holy on your holy hill? Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right, speaking with speaking the truth from sincere hearts. Those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. Those who despise fragrant sinners and honor the faithful followers of the Lord and keep their promises even when it hurts. 
those who lead who lend money without charging interest and who do not who cannot be bribed to lie about the innocent. Such people stand firm forever. Amen. Amen. So so you see how it's it's very it's very important that we are holy to be able to stand like to stand in the presence of God. Can you imagine that it's a big deal that that even like the Bible will go far to talk about like how you can lend money to somebody and not like charge them interest mm -hmm. and you're wondering what does that have to do with me right. standing in the presence of God. But it's just that it's just that it's that um it's that um I can't find the right word. It's like it's that important that we stand before God without any fault because I mean you wonder why not charge interest, but if you charge them too much interest and then you are stealing, and so now you have the fault on you of stealing. But God wants us to be without fault as we stand before Him. Amen. Amen. So that's why we need to be holy. Holiness is very key for us to access the presence of God. Amen. Even in James, I believe James talks about how the prayers of the righteous are heard by God. And so that is why we have to be holy. If you are not holy, if you have if you have faults and if, if you your life is just full of sins, it's really hard to communicate with God because your own questions begin to condemn you. Amen. Amen. So um, the other one is um, like holiness allows us to have an intimate relationship with God. Like if we look at um, if we look at the lives of the people who have really encountered God, like Abraham, Abraham could like talk to God and. Moses used to talk to God, but the Bible says that um, Abraham was counted as a righteous man. So you could see, like, if, like if you track all of them down, starting from David and um, and Joseph, there were people who like really strived and worked hard to live a holy life, and because of that, they were they had this significant and very intimate relationship with God where they would talk one on one you know like like uh, there's a sermon I listened to of how David would ask God like and it, it, it's a question that would always something that we would want in our lives when David was asking God for direction and asking if he should go ahead and move to another town and he he goes like Lord should I move to another town and God would reply to him, would answer to him because there's that closeness and because David has had always tried so hard to live in closeness and in holiness and so he was able to attain that intimate relationship with God. See the 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 most the most beautiful thing is that the same God that was with David is the same God that is today. So if we can work to live a life of holiness, yeah. we can also have that intimate relationship with God. You know, sometimes you hear people say that like, the Lord told me. I was like, excuse me, <laughs> the who told what? Like the Lord told you it's because they have that really close relationship with God that that they have worked so hard to get to. They have tried so hard to live a life of holiness. They have sanctified and consecrated themselves. To the point whereby that there's nothing, there's there's nothing that hinders that movement of God in their lives because God is holy and He can only sit in a holy place. See, so when we allow that, when we work towards holiness and we just walk in righteousness and we are, we get to that level of whereby we don't let anything in our lives that hinder. An encounter with God, we begin to hear Him because He now becomes so tangible in our lives, and our relationship with Him um, becomes we're better. So you know, like when it says, when when the Bible says, like be holy, God's will for you is to be holy. It's not really like it's not like a suggestion, or it's not a suggestion or just like an opinion. The Bible actually said be holy you must be holy for i the lord i am holy okay so it's 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 a command to be holy 
it's like God is really wanting us to be holy. That's why the Bible says God's will for you. Like that's what He wants you to do. If you've ever wondered, like God, what do you want me to do? It's just be holy. You know, like just be holy. Because I really wondered for the longest time, like what am I supposed to be doing with my life? You know, like but then it came so bored. <laughs> like just be holy, Mary. It's that easy. Be holy. You know. So, like, when the Bible says be holy, it's not, like, a suggestion. It is a command. Because um, in Leviticus, actually, um, 11.44, so Leviticus 11.44, um, I'm going to show you that it's a command. Like, God is not saying, at least be holy. He says, you must be holy, for I, the Lord. So it says Leviticus 11.44, it says, For I am the Lord your God, you must consecrate yourself and be holy, because I am holy. Mm -hmm. Do not defile yourselves with any of these small animals or, or scurry among the ground. That scurry among the ground. So it's like, be holy, do not defile yourself. He says, you must, for I am the Lord your God, you must be holy holy for I am holy you know so it's like it's a command God is is asking us just be holy you know because that's <clears throat> what is really close to his heart like it's so important to us to God that we are holy to the point that God knew that the only way he could um, make us holy again was to sacrifice his son so it's that important that you are holy because when Adam and Eve sinned, like there was that separation between us and God, and we are not holy. Like sin came into um, the human race, and the only way that God could get us to that level of holiness again was through Jesus, and He gave away His Son. So you are with without excuse, and that's why He says, "Be holy." Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, at first I used to like be holy, pure. You know, it seems impossible, but it is possible because if God is asking us to do it, then it is possible because God will not, will not ask us to do something that is not possible. He will not ask us to do something that is impossible. But, he, but the fact that He is asking us to be holy is because it is possible we can do it. Amen? Amen. So, um, so um, <clears throat> in First Peter, it even gets deeper. So we're not just... We just don't have to be holy, just be holy. You know, it, it, in First Peter, it talks about, First Peter 6, 1, 15 to 16, it talks about how we have to be holy in everything. Everything that we do, like not, it doesn't say be holy in some things. In, it says be holy in everything. So that includes what we say, what we think about, like the things that we get ourselves involved in. Like, we like we have to be holy in everything, and and in the very same verse he reminds us that he is go the one who called us is holy. So are we supposed to be holy? Um. So now, like uh, now, you're wondering. Okay, you are asking me to be holy, but how am I supposed to do that? So we are going to look at like applications of how like how to live a holy life. And in Second Timothy two, uh, twenty twenty two. 2.22, it talks about how we have to run away from anything that stimulates um, ungodly, um, anything ungodly within us. And, um, like, when, every time the Bible talks about, like, be holy and don't defile yourself, it's mostly, like, talking about, like, um, sexual sin and sexual immorality, but really... And you might be asking yourself, well, I do not commit adultery. But it's not always just not committing adultery. But it's it's deeper. Like in um, Jesus talks about how it's not just about committing adultery, but even like what like what goes in, in our minds and the things that we expose ourselves to that will lead us to Sexual morality. Amen. Amen. Um, Second Timothy two 